Chairman. I call uh, Dennis O'Rourke. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I just wanted to comment briefly on the four most important changes between the original bill and uh, what will ultimately be put to the vote. Uh, the first of those relates to Clause 5.2, and, uh, and that uh, relates itself to the time within which advice of an activity must be given under Section 330A of the Principal Act. Originally, the bill said that would be uh, 40 working days, or um, what's that, eight weeks? Um, the committee, I raised with the committee that that might not be adequate and that we ought to be generous <coughs> with the time for that. Uh, and so it was agreed that 60 working days instead should be provided for. And that, that's, of course, in addition to the additional days you would get over the Christmas holiday period. And the period runs from when the activity takes place. So it ought to be more than sufficient. And it needs to be ample because people, of course, uh, some of the people at least who would be involved would, will be in remote areas uh, where it's difficult to communicate uh, and they'll be under stress and have a, and quite frankly, a lot to do to recover from the earthquake. So it's better to err on the side of providing too much time rather than too little. So I think that was a, a good change which has been made. The second one, Mr Chairman, relates to um, Clause 6 and the notice to be given under subclause 2A, as it is now. That provides for, for a notice to be placed on the land, uh, which would uh, give the date and the purpose of entry and contact details. The committee felt on discussion that that might not be enough, given the fact that some people could be away either permanently or for extended periods and not actually see those notices, especially if they were on a part of the land uh, that wasn't uh, readily accessible. So uh, there was an addition to that, which will now appear as 2B in, the, in that uh, clause, so that as soon as practicable after entering the land, the local authority or consent or authority will have to serve a written notice containing that same information. And you would expect that would be done by letter in the same way that, for example, uh, rates notices would be sent out. So a good, formal and reliable way of making sure that people are properly informed. Now, the third one that I wanted to raise was one of the most important clauses in the bill, and that's um, clause 16, relating to the meaning of uh, rehabilitation work. And, of course, as we know, the activity will be a controlled activity, so it's one that must be allowed, but but with appropriate conditions. And the rehabilitation of the Kaikoura Harbour, as we know, is an absolute necessity, <coughs> but that care should still be exercised in doing the work which is carried out so as to avoid unnecessary environmental damage. Now, Mr Chairman, um, a number of submitters expressed concerns that the bill uh, had provisions relating to dumping, which we were told refers to the removal of material to another site altogether, and the term depositing, which means uh, placing the material in, the same, in another part of the same, same site where no transportation of it would be required. Now, there was a lot of uh, discussion about that, and I think we've come up with, a, as a committee, a great... Um, solution to it, so that um, clause 16.2b relating to depositing will be removed altogether. And we were advised that that is simply not necessary because the works that are envisaged just wouldn't uh, uh, require that a provision. Uh, and that will be uh, good news to the ears of those who are worried that some material uh, excavated from the channel to be created might simply be placed on the shoulder of the channel and do unnecessary damage to the marine environment there. And they were very um, concerned that that could happen. And in uh, Clause 16.2c, only the dumping of the material will be required, and then it will only be required on land or foreshore. Some submitters were, were concerned about dumping on the foreshore, but it is to be noted that, section, that clause 18 
will apply to require proper consideration, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Dennis O'Rourke. To reply to require proper consideration of environmental effects. And when you consider that some of that material will, if placed on the foreshore, understanding that the foreshore has been uplifted anyway and will therefore itself have been irre irre irreparably damaged, the, the possibility of da further damage will be very low. Um, the, other th the other change that was, that was made um, is that the term fish has now been added as one of the specified example, uh, examples um, in relation to this, so that, it, so that those who are worried about fishing, and I'm one of those, uh, Mr Chairman, um, can be assured that the, uh, uh, the, the care required concerning environmental effects will also consider that aspect of it. The fourth and last uh, change that I wanted to mention, Mr Chairman, um, related to the public meetings provided for under Clause 19, and uh, the committee has recommended the addition of 19.1c, uh, which says that the authority may, if the consent authority considers appropriate, hold a meeting to allow those persons to orally present their comments. And there were submissions by a number of people who were concerned that some of the special expertise that local people had, um, special local knowledge, uh, might be lost if they didn't have a chance to say what they wished to say. And the committee agreed, therefore, that it would be appropriate that a public meeting be held where, where it's advised concerning some of the um, applications that, that might be made. So not necessarily for all, but for those that are appropriate. So the committee agreed in the end that it would be best for the council to decide that rather than that be provided directly in the, in the, in the uh, act itself. So um, I think that's a, a good compromise. People will get a good chance to um, comment and to share their expertise and their local knowledge, but the council can decide where, when and where and for what, which subjects that is appropriate. So we, we don't want it to happen for, for everything. It would make uh, processes too long and too difficult. But I think that's a good balance between those, those considerations. So Mr Chairman, those are all the particular uh, changes, the most important changes that I think that, that the committee looked at and is recommending to the original bill, and I think that they will make a valuable contribution to ensuring that this legislation will be up to speed and as best as we can possibly make it be in the time available. And I certainly uh, wish the people of Kaikoura well in working their way through this legislation. We've done our best to make it uh, readable for them and understandable and will provide them with the, with the powers that they will need to do what is necessary and do it quickly and effectively. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Members, we come to the vote, and the question is that... Is the member going for a call? Yes, I... Well, you must go very quickly. Stephen Browning. I can see that. Thank you, thank you Mr Chair. So I rise to, to speak to the committee stage. It's